In this video, we'll discuss the contributions of Maslow and Rogers to personality development. So according to Abraham Maslow, personality development is a gradual progression towards self-actualization. So you see it's most often represented here as a pyramid, and these four lower levels, esteem, love and belonging, safety, and physiological, are grouped together as what are called deficiency needs. And these are all physiological needs that we must meet. The top level is termed a growth needs, and it's associated more with um, psychological growth. So these deficiency needs have to be met first, and once these are met, that drives personality growth through meeting these growth needs. So we start down here at this physiological level, and, and in order to move to the next level, these needs must be met. So physiological is you know breathing, food, water, sex, homeostasis, and then we move, once those are all satisfied, then we move to the safety level, security of your body, employment, morality of the family. Then you can move to the next level in the hierarchy, friendship, family, sexual intimacy. Those are the needs that are um, important at this level. And once those are satisfied, you move to the next level, um, which is esteem for self-esteem, achievements, respect of others, being respected by others. So once you move up to the next level, needs in the lower levels aren't prioritized. However, if a set of needs is no longer being met, the individual will self reprioritize and go back to whatever need needs to be met. So you could be up here at the self-esteem level, but let's say uh, you lose your job, then you might go back to this physiological level. Or maybe you're at this friendship level and somebody breaks into your house, you'd go back to the safety level. You never regress to a lower level, you just go back and satisfy those needs so you can go back up to the level that you were at. So an example might be a businessman at the esteem level who's diagnosed with cancer. He'll spend a great deal of time concentrating on his health, which is a physiological need, but he would still value his work performance and thus is likely to return to work during a period of remission. Another psychologist that adhered to the humanistic perspective was Carl Rogers. So his ideas focused around the idea of self-concept. And while it was something that we discussed back in the lifespan chapter, just to remember, remember what it is, self-concept is a set of attributes, abilities, attitudes, and values that an individual believes defines who he or she is. So it's what we think makes up who we are, how we would describe ourselves. So Carl Rogers broke this into the ideal self and the real self, with the ideal self being who we want to be and the real self being who we actually are at the time. And he felt that congruence between the real self and the ideal self, when they're similar, makes for a well-adjusted individual. So that congruence occurs when our ideal self and our real self align. However, incongruence between the two would lead to an individual who is maladjusted. So when our ideal self and our real self do not align, the individual becomes maladjusted. So parents can help individuals um, our child achieve congruence by providing them with what's called unconditional love. So this is where um, acceptance and love that we receive is unqualified. There's no strings attached. You don't have to act how the parent wants you to act.